Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're going to be discussing about potting mediums and how to repot orchids as less as possible. Repotting can be quite a stressful situation for orchids, especially the ones with fine roots. There's always a chance you're going to destroy the root system. So repotting as less frequent as possible is actually very beneficial for orchids. Now today I will now refer to the repottings that are actually really useful, like repotting new orchids into fresh medium or repotting them because the medium is not suitable for them, it might be old and so on. Those are repottings that are beneficial. I'm just gonna refer to the maintenance repotting that occur because the medium broke down. So here are the most long-lasting and best in my opinion mediums that I've encountered so far. And because we all have different preferences, environments and lifestyles, I'll go through the three major repotting mediums or potting styles. First will be organic, second inorganic and third alternative methods of growing orchids without actually needing to pot them. Okay, so let's start with bark medium. For the vast majority of time that I've grown orchids, I used bark. And I used a pretty cheap brand. It was okay, but it lasted me for one, two, maximum two years before it started to break down, favor some molds, and that's not really optimal. I had a chance though to try out kiwi bark. Now this is not bark coming from a kiwi tree, it's still pine bark, but it's prepared differently. And it is supposed to last longer than normal bark. I used it for about 6 months and I have to say it does indeed look like it's gonna last more than normal bark. And in 6 months that I had it, it really didn't look like it broke down any bit. Now with all of these mediums you will have links down below if you want to check them out and learn more because I did make videos at the time. But like with any medium, this will have cons as well. So kiwi bark is not very water retentive. So initially in the first months of use you need to pay attention how frequent you water your orchids. You will find that you will need to water more frequent than usual because kiwi bark does not retain as much water. As a rule, mediums that do not retain a lot of water break down slower than mediums which retain quite a lot of water. So as a con, you need to pay attention with watering. But if you can deal with that and what you're looking for is a long-lasting medium, do check out kiwi bark and I think orchiara bark is pretty much the same thing, it is supposed to last long I personally did not use it, so I can only vouch for kiwi bark. Next up is sphagnum moss. Now, sadly, this being a very water retentive sphagnum moss, you cannot really do much about it. It will degrade faster than bark and pretty much any other type of medium. But there are orchids who simply must be potted in sphagnum moss. And also, there are environments who benefit a lot from the properties of sphagnum moss, if used correctly. Up until now, I used chili moss, and I can tell you that it's not the best of things in my opinion. First of all, it is very dirty, it has all sorts of debris, sometimes even seeds of other plants. Maybe this depends on brand, but I tried two different brands and it was the same story. It's not clean. I do believe though that a better quality sphagnum moss is the pure New Zealand sphagnum moss. The more expensive it gets, usually the better it is. So even though sphagnum moss does degrade faster than bark, if you have the option, do try out the New Zealand sphagnum moss rather than the chili moss. I do tend to believe it is a bit more long-lasting than the chili moss. And by the way, regarding sphagnum moss, I have linked down below in the description my tutorial on how to use sphagnum moss. So if you're one of those persons who really dislikes sphagnum moss, check out that video, use it correctly and it can be a wonderful medium, use it incorrectly and you're gonna kill your orchids in a matter of days. Another popular medium is coconut husk, but in my experience, it just degrades much faster than bark as well. Again, it is more water retentive and microbes and decomposition bacteria, pretty much all sorts of microorganisms do better and multiply faster in high moisture conditions. The soggier the medium is, the faster it will break down. So I used a few brands of coconut husk, but they all degraded much faster than bark for me. If you would like to try it out though, be warned that this type of medium can have salts and a lot of tannin. So down below you have a link in which I show you how I prepared my coconut husk medium. I didn't have that much issues with tannin and salts, but I did have issues with the composition. For this reason, I would not include this type of medium in the longest lasting mediums there are out there for orchids. But here is another medium that is indeed very long lasting and this is charcoal. I personally did not try it, at least not with orchids, I used it with my aquarium. Charcoal is one of those mediums that is widely used in Asia because they do have a very humid environment, quite a lot of rain and they need a less water retentive medium. Charcoal works great in those environments. 
and if you have a similar environment it can work great for you as well. It is very long lasting but very very little water retentive. So you can imagine that if you have a dry environment it will not be the best suited medium for you. You will need to water a lot lot more frequent than you would with bark and obviously sphagnum moss. But as longevity is concerned it is very long lasting. And this is about it when it comes to organic media. Now let's talk about inorganic, which is actually my medium of choice at the moment. As you can imagine, being that it's inorganic, it does not decompose. Theoretically, it's gonna last you for a lot of years, or forever, maybe. If you don't know what the medium I use is, you can of course check out the description below. I have a video in which I present it. Basically, I use hydrogen clay pebbles and ceramics. Many of you might be already acquainted with hydrogen clay pebbles. It is widely used in semi-hydroponics. Ceramics is a newer thing to the hobby. I don't know if there was anybody who tried it before me, but it's pretty much the same as clay pebbles. It is still clay, it is just prepared in a different way. Ceramics is quite a lot more porous than leca beads or hydrogen beads, thus it retains more water, it is more absorbent, as you will see in that video. Of course, the pros of this type of medium is that it's so long-lasting that theoretically you can keep orchids in it for years and years and years and years. Another good thing about it is that you can reuse it. Let's say for whatever reason you want to unpot an orchid from that medium and use the medium again, you can simply give it a boil, sterilize it, use it once again and it's good as new. You could always oven it, but by boiling you actually remove the salt deposits if there are any, so boiling is a better idea to sterilize this type of medium. The cons of this medium, well, it retains a lot of water. In my opinion, it needs to be paired with a proper pot, and I choose to use clay pots, which are unglazed and are very ventilated. Another con of this medium is that it kind of stays cold, so if you already live in a very cold climate, I'm not sure if this would be the appropriate medium for you. Warm growing orchids really don't like to have very cold feet, let's call them like that. Also, if you have a cold and humid environment, again, it might not be the best solution for you because it does retain a lot of water. However, if you live in a warm, sometimes dry environment like I have, this can work wonders. Coupled with the fact that it does not decompose and promote mold, I believe is really, really good for me. I'm still testing it out, but it's an option if you're interested in something inorganic. I would say it has a little bit of the properties of bark in the sense that it's very chunky and a bit of the properties of moss in the sense that it retains a lot of water. I did however find some limitations with this medium. My Vanda orchids absolutely hated potted in this medium. Also I had some issues with pure terrestrial orchids. So at least for me and my setup it didn't work. But for the other orchids it does seem to work wonderful. Another inorganic medium you might consider is synthic. Now this is uh, newer than ceramics. What it is, I think it's microfiber, I'm not yet sure. It is supposed to be an artificial sphagnum moss. I have to tell you, it's not quite like sphagnum moss. After using it for a while, I discovered some flaws with it, but we'll get to them. This can retain, again, a lot, a lot, a lot of water, just like sphagnum moss. It is pretty fluffy and very well suited for orchids with fine roots, but also for the ones with thick roots. The downside of this material and the reason why I don't use it like sphagnum moss is that after a few uses it stops being absorbent in the sense that it kind of repels water. So just wetting it at the sink will not be enough, it needs soaking. But if you soak this thing it will retain a lot of water. For this reason I cannot use it as a topper layer, I cannot use it in between the ceramics because it interrupts the absorbency of ceramics. But how I like to use it is with vandas or around orchids that are bare rooted and could use some more moisture. Vandas get soaked in a bucket every day, so this will get soaked as well. It has enough time to actually absorb water. So I can imagine that if you have a basket or a vanda basket that you can soak, this can work beautifully. Again, it does not decompose because it is synthetic and theoretically it should last you a long, long time. One concern that I have with this is the accumulation of algae. Not sure how good you'll be able to remove algae from this, but maybe a soak in hydrogen peroxide can help you with that. Or maybe you don't really mind algae. But it is definitely a viable option and in some setups it really does work. And of course you can check out the video about this product down in the description below.
And as a last idea, because orchids don't really care what they're potted in unless it's toxic or it gives the wrong air to moisture ratio, there are people who use all sorts of materials like glass beads. Some people use wine corks. Well, that's organic. But you get what I'm saying. It's something that does not degrade at all or quite as fast. Even though they're long lasting, there are a few downsides with them when it comes to moisture retentive. So I will not mention it, but just so you know, yes, there are people who do grow orchids in all sorts of materials. Materials. Because again, orchids don't really care what they're potted in. Okay, so that's about it with medium. Now let's talk about different ways of actually growing orchids that do not necessarily imply a pot. And the first most popular way is mounted orchids. I had a few myself. I've given them up because it simply doesn't go that well with my lifestyle. But what it implies is that you actually attach an orchid to a piece of wood or cork. This is actually a lot closer to how epiphytic orchids would grow in nature. Epiphytic orchids can grow either on trees, but some grow on rocks as well. Those are lithophytes, but they're still epiphytes. Of course, you will find a video down below which explains how to make a mount, where to purchase the materials and so on. But speaking about mounts, I tend to prefer two types of mounts to all other types of mounts. First, it is cork bark. Now, this type of bark really does not decompose all that fast. In comparison with wood, it's really much, much better when it comes to decomposition. The downside is it really does not retain any water. So you need to be careful with your watering regime. Do not skip any days. Mounted orchids require a lot of attention when it comes to watering. And the second type of mount that I actually prefer to the cork is the clay mount. I had a chance to use it a little bit. I like it, but again, I do prefer pots. The clay mount is, of course, made out of clay. It will never decompose but it is quite heavy and if you drop it on the floor, it will break and it will become useless. Also, clay tends to stay a little bit more cool. So again, if you live in a cooler environment and you have a warm growing orchid, clay might not be the best for you. But when it comes to longevity, I don't think there is a better amount out there than clay because it is inorganic. It retains quite a bit of moisture and also some of them look quite realistic. Don't imagine you will confuse it for a tree slab, but you know what I mean. Another way to grow orchids is bare rooted, as you can see here in a basket without any type of medium. Of course, this type of growing will mean that you do not need to repot your orchids because you are not dealing with any pots or any medium. But not all orchids are suited for this type of growth. I would say that orchids who are tolerant to drought do better in this setup. I have Vandas here and although they are heavy drinkers, they do tolerate drought pretty, pretty well. They also love to have ventilation around the roots. I would say Cattleyas go well like this as well. And of course, the species related to Cattleyas such as Summoncyclias, Epidendrums and so on. But things like Hamiltoniopsis, even Anoncidium, I'm not sure how good they will do like this. Maybe Phalaenopsis can do good like this as well. For Vandas, it is the setup of choice for me. And if you'd like to know how I water Vandas like this, you can of course check out the description below. Speaking of vandas, there's another way to grow them, which is again bare rooted, but it does not imply you hanging them. And this is vanda in a vase. And when I started my orchid hobby, pretty much all of my friends were growing vandas like this, because at the time in my country, vandas were only sold in glass vases. And this is a viable option as well, because it does provide ventilation still, but it also provides more moisture. The glass vase will retain more humidity than if you would keep them bare rooted. And in the description below, you'll have a video with my friend's Vanda, which was grown like this and it looked pretty, pretty good. It implies again, regular soaking or misting the vase from time to time. Beware, it does not imply you keep the orchid in water. That's a totally different thing. Judging from the comments I get lately, it appears that water culture is starting to transition to that type of vase culture, which is now water culture, but I'm not up to date with that topic, so I'm not really sure how they call it these days. But Vanda in a vase is a style used for a lot, a lot of years. It works. You need to be careful though how you water your Vanda. Make sure it still has ventilation. The downside is that it's space consuming. I never used vases because they're just so big, so space consuming. And for my greenhouse and environment, this is a lot better, but it is a viable option. And I'll link you down below to some forum discussions from some years ago. And of course, also to my video with my friends band. Other orchids that can work like this again might be Calia orchids and those type of orchids who really can tolerate or even like a lot of air movement around the root system. 
And speaking about water culture, since we're on the topic, I personally cannot back it up because it goes against my understanding of what epiphyte or air plants are in general. So if I don't believe it's viable on the long run, I cannot recommend it to you. But if you Google it, there are quite a few communities that are using it, talk about it. So if this is something that makes sense to you, go ahead and search for them and I'm sure they will help you out. But just keep in mind, bare roots in a vase does not equal water culture. Speaking about inorganic medium, there is a type of setup called semi-hydroponics. It implies you manufacturing a sort of a pot with a reservoir and using either hydrogen clay pebbles, either ceramics. I will test out the ceramics with this as well. I tried it in the past, it was not for me and my climate. The two downsides to this method is that if you have an environment which is warm, dry, super ventilated all the time, for me at least, and the type of hydrogen I used, the upper part was dry, while the low part with the reservoir was very, very wet. I could not get this Leka to be consistently moist. I might get it with ceramics. A second aspect that I didn't like was that in my old climate, I had really, really cold winters. My balcony reached 15 degrees Celsius, and if you have wet roots at that temperature, it's not gonna end well for your orchid. So semi-hydroponics works indeed with some orchids, and in some environments, I would say that if you have a pretty constant warmish environment, it will go better than in a cold environment or super dry and super ventilated. In a house environment, this tends to go better than in a separate room, maybe outside orchids and so on. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you some ideas of alternative mediums or setups if you're looking for something new and you would like to try it out. Mind you, with anything, anything at all, always test it out on one or two or a few orchids first rather than going and changing the whole entirety of your collection. Because what might work for me might not work for you. Even if our environments are the same, your lifestyle might be different than mine and you would prefer something else and maybe you have your own opinions about how things work, you know? So if something is appealing, do try it out, why not? But just try it at least for a few months with one or two orchids, just so you see if you like it. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching this video, hope it was interesting and it gave you some ideas of alternative mediums if you were looking for one. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for daily orchid videos and I'll see you all next time. Bye! I think my Hoya cuttings have caught. The leaves are not so dehydrated anymore. Also, I believe this is a Hoya Australis Nut Carnea tricolor. And thank you for pointing that out. Uh, but the good thing is the Australis smells better than the Carnea. So I'm happy. Cannot wait to see this little plant grow and if it will ever turn pink.